last time we left you as we had arrived at Napton and now it's time to move on. Around the corner is Napton's second marina. The first one we passed was Wigram's Turn, which has the Black Prince holiday boats in them, and that's right opposite Napton Junction towards the Grand Union to Birmingham. As we go past, you can see Napton Narrowboats. The whole fleet is in because we're still on lockdown, but they're in such beautiful condition. Someone's worked really hard over the lockdown. As you can see, they're shining like new. Seems such a shame to see them there and not being used. It's nice when there are other boats on the canal. The canal runs along the bottom of Napton on the hill, though it's often referred to locally as just Napton. It boasts a superb little village shop that's got a post office in it, a corner that is full of locally sourced produce, a delicatessen, as well as all your daily necessities. From the parish church of St Lawrence, which was built in the 12th century and still has three Norman windows in its north wall, you can climb towards the windmill for a better view, but that's now on private property and unfortunately is never open to the public. I do like windmills, they remind me of Windy Miller and it's such a shame that they rarely go working or that you see the sails going round but they do look nicer than the modern day windmills.
At this end of the village are a lot of visitor moorings. As we come round the corner we come up to the water points which is really useful as we're getting very low on water. As we leave towards the lock you can see Brian going along like a little gazelle to help get them ready. To the right of the bridge was the Folly, a quaint pub at the foot of the locks, and also boasts of canal shop, but unfortunately it was closed due to the lockdown. On the left are the CRT services, where we can get rid of our rubbish. As we head towards the lock, I can see Jane, my friend, who's come along specially to help us up. She's a trooper. I'd just like to mention that I have sped the film up to nearly twice the speed, which is why they look a little strange while they're walking. The Oxford Canal's chief engineer, Samuel Simcock, designed the canal to be a contour canal as much as possible, so he routed it around the three sides of Napton Hill to minimise the number of locks needed. Even so, to climb from Napton Wharf to the Summit Pound at Marston Dole's required eight locks around the hill, numbers 8 to 15, and another at Marston Dole's, number 16. That between them raised the boats by a total of 52 feet or 16 metres. As we wait for the boat to rise in the lock, Jane goes on up to set the next one ready for us to come in. And Brian is taking a well-deserved rest. These single gates can be surprisingly heavy. and I get off to close the gates behind us.
Jane then helps us up the next six locks all on her own while me and Brian stared on the back of the boat like Lord and Lady Muck. She was really good to us that day. And having raised us up the first seven locks, she says goodbye to us, leaving us to do the last two on our own. Having reached the last two locks, I've gone up and opened the gates and having got back on the boat, Brian goes running on up waiting for me to come in. We are such a team. Thank you. 
I really need to lose some weight. Although Brian is steering, I am pulling him out of the lock because although he's had a successful operation, his eyes are still recovering and his eyesight still isn't clear due to his old prescription glasses no longer suiting him. There's always something about an old well. I always feel the need to throw some money in and make a wish. It's not long before we reach the top lock at Master and Dolls. He's had a busy day. So as we got to wait for another boat to come down, he takes another well-earned rest. Once again, I am walking him into the lock. As you can see, the centre line has so much rope that I really do struggle with holding it in my hands. The amount of times I drop it. As I pull him through, the rope gets caught on the actual lock gate and it takes me quite a while to free it. I was quite worried at one point that I wasn't going to manage it. Something I need to be really careful of in the future. Yet another very heavy gate. It's surprising because they're not very big at all. Just think of the gym fees that I'm saving.
Once again, I'm guiding him out of the lock and we decided that we're going to pull up for a little while and have some lunch. So pulling him past the lock moorings, I aim for what I think is a perfect space to stop, only to find out it's a water point and we can't stay there after all. Ah well, guess I'm going to go hungry.